Now we are going to see how the silkworms are rearing in a rearing house from egg stage to cocoon harvesting. Rearing of silkworm to produce raw silk is called sericulture. In this process, silkworms are reared at appropriate temperature and humidity to get silk threads from cocoons. The process of keeping, feeding, breeding and medical care of silkworm is called silkworm rearing. In the beginning, the female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs. These eggs are stored over a clean paper or piece of cloth. These eggs are then sold to the silkworm farmers. The farmers then keep the eggs under the accurate temperature and humidity at a clean place. They are warmed to the most appropriate temperature to hatch eggs to produce larvae or caterpillar. This process is done when the mulberry trees have fresh crop of leaves. The caterpillar eats this mulberry leaves day and night. It grows in size. Types of rearing Rearing of silkworm is mainly of two types. Chalky rearing Rearing of young age silkworms is called chalky rearing. Here, worms are reared up to third mold and distributed to the rear eggs for late-age rearing. Chalky rearing is quite troublesome because young-age larvae are vulnerable to pathogens. So, care is must. To avoid this risk at each government rearing centers, First to third instructs larvae are reared with great care and after that these larvae are handed over to the rear eggs. Late-age rearing Late-age rearing after the third mold does not require high temperature and humidity compared to chalky rearing. Late-age rearing is a little easier because than chalky rearing. During late-age, the quantity of mulberry leaf required is more than 90% of total larval period. During fifth stage, that is fifth instruct, particularly the larvae eat voraciously worms feel maximum appetite larvae losses water from its body. Hence, less temperature, low humidity, good ventilation is required. Various steps of rearing are as follows. Collection of transportation of eggs. Eggs can be obtained from two sources. First source is the rear eggs can produce eggs in their own house by covering the postnatal females with cellulose on a cardboard. The second way is they can purchase eggs from either government drainage or licensed private drainage. The second option is safer because eggs can carry the spores of Nasima the causative parasite of the most dreadful disease, peptidine, DFLs, that is disease-free layings, are transported safely in a wet handbag in early morning or late evening, so that no damage to the embryo is done. In case loose eggs, these are carried by transportation box covered with wet cloth. During transportation, DFLs, that is the disease-free layings, should be kept at 25 degrees Celsius temperature and 80% humidity with proper aeration. 
yield cards are spread in the yield trays kept in cooler place only. Incubation For uniform hatching, all the yield cards or loose yields should be kept in dark and cooler atmosphere. On the day of blue egg stage, eggs are covered with a black sheet or kept in black box. On the day of hatching, newly hatched larvae are exposed to bright light in the early morning at around 8 am so that 95% hatching can be achieved. Brushing it involves transferring of newly hatched larvae into egg trays. For loose eggs, these are covered with a net and chopped mulberry leaf or sprinkled over the net. The larvae slowly crawl onto the net and start to feed on the leaves. Then these are transferred into the rain trays and choked leaves are sprinkled over the larvae. The larvae crawl onto the mulberry leaf and later on the cards are removed. The larvae should not be touched with the hands. Instead, chopsticks are used to spread the worms in the rain tray. Feeding of leaves. Three to four feeds per day are given to the silkworm, of which the last feeding, that is, during the night, should be a little more since the duration for the next feeding will be longer. Overfeeding is also avoided. Feeding of tender leaves to young age worms is essential. Tender leaves are finely chopped and sprinkled on the larvae. During the first install, 2 to 2.5 kg of leaf per 100 DFLs, that is, disease free layings, are provided. As the larvae advances, the mature leaves are supplied. More number of feeding is given during summer. Since moisture content in the leaf will not be sufficient during summer and the leaves will dry very easily. Maximum leaf consumption and growth occur during the fifth instruct. About 50% of the total weight is increased in the fifth instruct alone. During this stage, maximum growth of silk gland occurs. In addition to the nutritive value, the number of feeds in each instrument plays a major role in the cocoon build. Spacing During the early stages, larval growth is very fast. For proper growth, sufficient spacing is required. Since overcrowding in the rearing tray results in increased humidity, heat, fermentation of litter, which results in unhygienic conditions, wastage of leaf, and improper growth of silkworm. So, spacing is essential for silkworm rearing. Bed cleaning. Braid and waste leaves in the bed, excreta of the silkworms, diseased and purified larvae, exerve of the worms, all increase the humidity. Fermentation and temperature in the bed. The cleaning of the bed is done for maintaining hygiene and proper growth. Bed cleaning is done by various methods like using of paddy husk, straw and bed cleaning net. During the install, bed cleaning should be done 
once during pre mortem during the second instruct twice once in pre mort and once in post mort during the third instruct thrice the dose in post mort in pre mort and once in the inter mort during the fourth and fifth instructs once in a day in case of shelf rearing however in case of flow rearing or shoot rearing once in each instruct mounting transferring of mature silk worm on the mounted or cocoon frames is called mounting at the end of the fifth instruct these become yellowish and translucent stops feeding and move by raising their head a liquid like substance oozes out of the mouth from the spinneret these movements clearly indicate that they are ready to spin they are now transferred to the mountages manually proper spacing should be given to avoid formation of double cocoons strained cocoons or ordinary cocoons usually the number of worms should be 40 to 50 worms per square feet or 800 to 900 worms per meter square the size of mountage varies from place to place in case of bamboo made chandrika built over a mat of size 6 inch into 4 inch can accommodate about 1000 worms different types of chandrika are used for mounting purpose plastic mounted bamboo made chandrika straw mounted bottle press revolving mounted etc already we see about the different types of mountages in the real apart appliances incubation For uniform hatching, all the egg cards or loose eggs should be kept in dark and cooler atmosphere. On the day of blue egg stage, eggs are covered with a black sheet or kept in black box. On the day of hatching, newly hatched larvae are exposed to bright light in the early morning. at around 8 am so that 95 percentage hatching can be achieved Harvesting of cocoons. Harvesting of commercial cocoon is done manually on the fifth day of spinning. Whereas seed cocoons should be harvested on the eighth or ninth day of spinning. Thank you.